no, this is, all right. All right, ready when you are. What do you do with your hands? Just pet the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Three, two, I'm gonna laugh. One. Hey guys, uh, this is Luke with another uh, shoe review from Gingerbread Man Running Company. Um, we are here today to review the uh, Mizuno Wave Horizon 4. Uh, you'll notice my sidekick seat is empty today. Zach is behind the camera. Hey Zach, uh, due to the current restrictions that are being put in place for wearing masks in public and the use of microphones, we decided a little bit of uh, social distance was in order. So he's behind there to comment, criticize, and uh, add any info uh, as we go through. So if you hear a disembodied voice, just go with it. Um, special thanks again to Brandon, uh, Brandon Payne from That Painful Music. The intro and outro music are awesome. Uh, we appreciate it. If you like what you've heard so far, he actually does original music. Check him out on thatpainfulmusic.com or on his YouTube channel. One of these places. There'll be buttons, maybe. I don't know. I got it the last two times. <laughs> anyway, uh, and last point of order is, of course, if you like what we're doing here, you appreciate more technical reviews as opposed to just uh, pictures of people running in shoes and saying they look cool. Um, hit like, smash that share button. Uh, we appreciate it. Any little bit helps. But with that, let's dive into some of the technical details. This, again, is the Mizuno Wave Horizon 4. Uh, we did not let you guys vote on this one this week, and I apologize for that, but we felt like we needed to give this guy a shout out um, because this shoe came out literally the day Pennsylvania shut down from uh, COVID-19. It came out March 15th, um, and it came to our store as, as we were literally locking the doors. So it's kind of a lot of its fanfare of a new launch kind of got lost in the shuffle. So um, again, we'll go back to the voting uh, the voting for the next review and the next review after this one, but we wanted to sneak this guy in real quick because it is a really cool update. Um, a lot of changes from the three. So real quickly, uh, I'm gonna pull out an old version of the three in the women's. Um, aesthetically, right out the gates, um, it's a completely different shoe. This shoe was a great pull and it did very well for us. It was a very soft shoe. Um, you stepped into it and you felt very plush. It was. It's a shoe that a lot of people liked for its own merits, um, but the new one has a lot of changes. So if you're a fan of the three, uh, pay attention because the changes are, in my opinion, good, but they're different. And any time a shoe, cha shoe changes this much, it's important to kind of be aware before you blindly just resubscribe to the new, the new year's model. Um, the biggest difference is that the signature Mizuno wave plate um, is now replaced by the more aesthetic foam wave. Um, this is something Mizuno has kind of done consistently in every single pair of shoes for about two decades now. Um, it's, it's been their, literally their name of all their shoes, Wave Horizon, Wave Rider, Wave Inspire. Uh, and then for them to get away from that, uh, no longer have that plastic was a lot of a, lot of a, a, a change in the, in the uh, direction of the shoe. They still have the wave look to it with the foam. And the way the foam is stacked with the euphoric X on top and the euphoric foam on the bottom, the softer foam kind of compresses down into the white firmer foam and still gives you that kind of wave pop. So in, in essence, it still has that energy return that the wave was signature known for, um, but it's no longer has that plastic kind of call out feature that you can see in, in a lot of their earlier models. Uh, the support is a lot different as well. Um, on the inside here, you can't see any external bracketing. There's no medial post. Uh, on the inside, there is e internally a plastic EVA post um, that runs along the arch to kind of give you a little bit more stiffness there. Uh, but more importantly, geometrically, on the inside is this X-pop foam. And we'll get to that X-pop foam again in a second. But geometrically, that X-pop foam is loaded uh, like a wedge where it is denser on the medial side and thicker on the medial side so it gives you more support. Um, I'm not gonna lie, whenever I first heard about all these changes, I, I wanted to see it on some feet before we had a chance to kind of really review it. It's just as supportive as the old version. Um, and with that, that quicker uh, X-pop foam, it gives you more kind of a, a runnable shoe. I loved my old Skies and the old Horizons and the, the version two and the version three, but they kind of felt dead when you tried to run in them. They were great for walking around in, but they were just flat. 
there was no kind of energy return. They just kind of were empty whenever you tried to get up on your toes and kind of move. As a walking shoe, they did great. And we had a lot of customers that liked it as a walking shoe. But when you're looking for a running shoe, this guy kind of tr transforms that bridge a little bit better into running and walking. Um, the X-Pop is mainly the reason for that. And you've heard me talk about thermopolyurethane foams on here before. It's just another version of that. Um, it's hard to see in this call out because it's not exposed like it is in Saucony or it is in Brooks or, or, or the other models that use the thermopolyurethane foam. But they do have a little window of it here for you to see uh, that, that yellow beading. That's what that is. And it, it runs basically, it's encased in this, uh, uh, in between these two ones. So it acts like a wedge that, or a, a trampoline that whenever it gets compressed in between the two different layers, it pops you up with a little bit more energy return. And it does the job a lot, a lot smoother um, than what the plastic, uh, the plastic wave and the, uh, the plastic uh, wave and the older models used to do. So that's why I think it's a better running shoe. Uh, I love the ground contact through the arch. I feel like that's something that gives it a more smoother transition. You have a lot more kind of ground contact. And then the upper is just a lot cleaner. Uh, this had a nice arch cage to kind of hold it in place and the three, um, but there was a lot of stitching and bunching here. They've gone to that engineered mesh. Uh, it still has, and I'll call this out here that you can see, it still has that thicker wrap on it, but it's a lot more smoothing with a with a press on upper as opposed to a stitched on upper. And even the logo uh, is a lot smoother on here. Uh, it doesn't bite in at all. Uh, there's no spots where if you have a bunion or anything like that, it'll kind of give you any kind of problems. Collar, nice and plush, not overly plush. It's kind of medium in that sense, um, but they do a good job overall of making a seamless upper uh, fit onto a totally redesigned bottom. So this is one of those examples of a shoe that that is uh, in name, a descendant of the three, but in practice is a completely different shoe. Um, and like I said, if you were a fan of the three, you may not like the four, but in my opinion, it's a better upgrade. Price stays the same, weight stays the same. Uh, for women, about 9.9 .9 ounces. For men, about 11.3 ounces. Uh, I think the ramp's the same too. I, I didn't look at that, but it's been about 10 millimeter ramp for uh, for like the last year or two for those guys. Um, so again, those are the specifics. That's my intention, uh, my, my take on it. Um, Zach for sizing, you said that you felt that this ran like a half size small. Just about. I'd agree with that. I'd say Mizuno as a brand is about a quarter size to a half size smaller. This I guy, had to go up to a 10. you had to go up to 10. I, I, I'm between 10 and a half, 11. I went up to an 11 in this guy. Um, but it runs really well. Um, just try it on and get the size that fits best for you. Um, anything else I'm forgetting, Zach? Uh, we said price is the same, stay at 160. Yep. Other than that, um, did I say that? About it's very comfortable. Yeah, and this is this has been getting a lot of love. Uh, this is Zach's pick for best new launch of or new new update of 2020 so far. And, and granted, it's been kind of hard with the year being split so far. But uh, but again, we wanted to call it out just because it kind of got lost in the shuffle of everything being shut down. So that's why we, we cut the votes off for this one. Uh, but we'll be back next week with a, a, a choice for you guys to pick between A and B. And again, we'll go back to that. A lot of new shoes coming out this summer. Uh, they're coming in our doors and we're testing them out. Um, obviously, we don't want to do it the second it comes in the door, we want to see it on some feet. We want to run some miles in it, get some actual um, practical input. Um, but stay tuned. And uh, again, as always, if you've got something that you'd like us to do, uh, a shoe that's on your radar that you're just not sure about, put it in the comments, send us a message, and uh, we'll make sure we get to that first. Uh, anything else, Zach? Thanks, Brandon Payne, one more time for the music on the outro. All right. And the intro. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, we appreciate uh, those of you that appreciate the technical details of being a shoe nerd. So stay safe, stay healthy, and stay classy.